Hey guys, welcome to Oxygen Not Included! My name is Twitchy and we are going to be playing through this game together. Clyde's amazing space colony simulator. You can see here, the first thing we need to do is choose our duplicates. And I do in fact spend a little bit of time doing this. I want these first few duplicates to be able to split the jobs amongst themselves. The main ones that I am looking out for here are things like build, dig, research, uh, farming. That's also quite high on the list right now. We're going to go through and enable them for my top pledged patrons you can see mad frank captain subs and eventually when i get round to it a shrouticus the great uh, these guys are uh, doing uh, various jobs as i say we've got shrouticus on the dig supply and trade we've got captain subs supply build farm and mad frank is our research and operate person calling the asteroid twitchy's tremendous trojans because like trojans a type of asteroid around jupiter right so so that that kind of makes sense all right first job on well, I should, I should explain what's doing here. We have spawned in through the wonder of this, this duplicate making machine. It has taken the genetic ooze that the duplicates are made from and spat three subjects out. We are in a rock, uh, we are in a world made of rock and we need to take this rock and transform it into various items to uh, aid our survival in this world. One of the first things that I need to turn the rock and copper into is a bathroom because despite the fact that I don't think these duplicates have eaten or drank anything, they still have waste systems on the go. I don't know where it actually comes from now that I have taken the moment to think about that. I'm not sure where the waste in the pre-game comes from, but anyway, it doesn't matter because you need a toilet. If, the, if these guys do not have a toilet after a certain preordained amount of time, they uh, make a mess as the game euphemistically puts it. <laughs> Now, I could just put toilets down and that would be fine, but of course, when you go to the toilet, you need to wash your hands afterwards. So I put those sinks in front of the toilets there. Uh, I also have a pre... A pre uh, allocated a bunch of jobs that's the word I'm looking for pre allocated a bunch of jobs so that my duplicates can get down there dig down to the water that is below because obviously washing hands takes liquids I I'm not entirely sure why it takes liquids I'm sure just some sort of soap product would do I remember back in the the early days of the game there was like a, a chlorine hand sanitizer that kind of made sense to me but I also like the hand washing you can see the uh, the toilets being used there and made use of now each cycle is broken down into a few distinct regions the morning is for taking care of themselves there is only an hour there then there is the bulk of the day that is done for work time they then have a bit of town downtime i believe that to be two segments of downtime before they sleep for a third of the day work day take the work time takes up a lot of their day the next thing i'm putting down here is a power yes indeed if we we can just carry on grabbing around in the dirt farming natural resources for food and such forth but that's not how we're going to advance into a multi-stage uh, multi-stage multi-technology species no we've put down some power we've put down some batteries i am short of a copper i'm also going around putting the priorities up for the jobs that these guys like now if they like a job they they will perform it in half the time so if i can get the people with affinities for jobs on the right jobs things happen twice as quick which is just unbelievably good all right, we're going to stand around and watch these guys asleep again. What well, Two cycles gone immediately. It uh, is quite a fast pace at this. We're doing about 500 times uh, playback. But this is, this is quite a slow game when I'm just sat talking through it. I've tried playing this on stream a couple of times. And uh, much like Kerbal, whilst I can do so and fill up the time quite nicely, I don't feel enough of that chatter is about the game because not enough stuff is changing in the game. Unlike when we're playing it back at this speed. As you can see, I've also put down a research lab and connected it to the power. I'm also going around with my people. Oh, we have our first duplicate. But I'm going around trying to find sand so I don't let that drop on stuff. Zedtech, I decided to bring with us. Mainly for his cooking skills, believe it or not. So we're talking of situations that you might have difficulties believing. I just kind of left that research station sat there for far, far too long without assigning any research to it. Don't ask me why. I just got concentrating on other things like digging around and making sure that we could get to different zones building things i'm, I'm thinking um of tidying up as well having mess on the floor you see all these rocks and resources on the floor uh 
they disrupt my duplicate's happy state, their, their morale. Uh, and I would like to get on top of that. So I, I build a nice early set of compactors to put everything in. You also just had me, uh, just saw me have a quick look around the map, trying to find some sort of geysers. These are resource, ever uh, producing a resource nodes. So there's two things that I'm going to be working on for the next couple of seconds. One is you can see that I'm uh, narrowing down my water tank. This is because of the drop coming down the ladder would actually enable someone's urine to drip down into the water. And I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. So I moved the wall over one. I'm also digging down towards some of the resources at the bottom of the screen right there. But I then noticed how many hatches are in this hole. So I decided that I'm going to leave this as a hatch pit to... Uh, to put coal, uh, put th uh, items into to turn into coal as hatches eat various things that are left on the floor and turn that into coal. Uh, now I'm going around doing a little bit of tidying because as I say, if you don't tidy you end up with a, a rotten mess of a base and your duplicates get really depressed by the amount of rubbish on the floor. Uh, two things have just happened. I've set up a type of research. This is for farming because farming is very important, uh, and also set Zed's priorities to match with his preferred jobs, so all the jobs that he does can be done in half the time. Yeah, it is best. So up, up top here, I am working on a bedroom. Now, there is a game mechanic in play here where you can make an actual room. The game designates a clo enclosed space as a room, and depending on what things you put into that enclosed space, depends on what type of buffs the duplicates get. So those two duplicates having a sleep in a bed get a morale boost for the next... I think it's for the next day. I might be wrong there. But the duplicates sleeping on the floor uh, do uh, get a debuff for a sore back. Now, I could have just put beds randomly spaced around, but they wouldn't have got the a room buff there. Uh, also, the toilet uh, room is a, a room that gives a buff. I, th I think, again, it's a morale bu buff to be able to do your business in a room that you want to do it in. Now, obviously, because I forgot to set the research up, we have got ourselves in a little bit of a situation here where I have to wait for the research to get done. So we've got ourselves in a cleaning and research cycle. I did notice that we were running out of oxygen pretty quick there. If you have a look around, there's none of that blue rock that was leaking oxygen. So I put down an algae deoxygenator. This takes all the algae. That's the green stuff you can see on the map. Uh, we, my duplicates deliver the algae into that machine and it just kind of rips the oxygen out of it and pumps it into the world at large. A little, little area around the machine itself. So with the base tidied and the oxygen taken care of, night time falls upon us and our duplicates get to have some sleep. I decide to open up a second doorway into the bedroom because that just seems like a great idea. And I can also see all the plants and stuff up there that we will make better use of. There's like millwood and briar plants and bristle blossoms. These are all things that we're going to explain in much better detail as we make a use of them. But you can see up there stuff. There's also things like algae and and um, copper just in rock form up there, which is also good. So the research has just come in for the farm, and now I've got to try and think about where I'm going to put that. And I also selected the research for the next level electronics, because the batteries we've got, they're very small. And if you've got small batteries, that means people need to charge up the batteries more often, and that's no good. So we're going to try and do that. Now, I'm thinking about my end game uh, water use here. Where is my last water tank going to be? Oh, we, we need to uh, just take a moment to say these are all rubbish and get rid of them. Where is my end game water tank going to be? And I think it's going to be quite down low because uh, to the right there, if I can deal with the slime lung, I should be able to just like throw all my polluted water into the swamp biome. Though now that I stop and think about it, what I actually want to do is try and find a hot biome next to a cold biome so that I can put the water in the hot biome, cook all the germs out and then put it in the cold biome to drain it. Yeah, okay, uh, I'm gonna have to change that plan at some point. I still need to get down to the bottom though because this is where all my carbon is collecting, all my carbon dioxide. And uh, I'd like to make some sort of area to deal with that. Obviously in the early game, we're gonna have to be using alga terrariums, using the good old photosynthesis, even though there's no light on this rock. But uh, anyway, yeah, uh, and eventually we'll be using the carbon scrubber. You can see I put down a, a small selection of farm plots up there, and they're all going to be uh, labelled with uh, millwood. Unfortunately, we don't actually have enough millwood in the colony right now to replant all of that. This uh, will be solved pretty quickly just by digging out a large area. The vast majority of the millwood that you find in a colony is actually found behind rock. I don't understand how it got there, but you open up, uh, you dig a tile away and behind it sometimes a seed will fall down. This is where most of the hatches come from uh, and it's quite a, a crazy time that way. Another night falls upon us. Someone really should secure it better up there, but you can see the green, uh, green light there showing us the extent of our 
bedroom. You also notice that the doors are wide open. This is a tip that I got from the internet. The doors still count as room boundaries when you leave them open, but also your duplicates don't have to slow down for the door to open. So that just sounds like a winner there. I've left the doors wide open. I should probably do the same with the toilets. Now getting back to that tidying up issue, I decide that it's time to make a little bit of a storage room above our water. You can see I've left a hole uh, next to the pump as well. That's just in case I need to build a ladder as I've just done and need to get some duplicates in and out. There's a bunch of... Um like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Floor materials down there uh, that need tidying up. Uh, and also now time to replace one of these batteries. I'm gonna, I've got two batteries and I'm going to replace them one at a time for the larger ones just so we don't end up with no power at all. That's a, that's a bad situation to find yourself in. Uh, yes, indeed. Down the bottom, putting down a, another storage compactor so that we can dig up a bit of slime, put that slime in the storage compactor and see if the slime lung aerosizes. Uh, I'm, no spoilers there, but it doesn't work out quite as I hoped it would. My next plan is to try and start working on a kitchen, because whilst we are growing so some millwood, it's not much millwood, we need to grow much more millwood, but whilst we are growing some millwood, it's not actually a very nice meal for the duplicants. They they dislike millwood as a meal. So we're going to try and make a kitchen so we can make it into a more formal food form of some description. Formal food form? Mm, alliteration is strong with me today. Uh, and maybe then be able to build out into a larger farming area so that'll be quite good uh, I do have to say I have literally just had a look at Zed Tech stats I completely misspoke earlier he is not the chef he's not the guy I got for for cooking I thought he was but it turns out he builds supplies and tidies which is well you know it's a good good set of life skills uh, there we are making a brand new uh, no no cook here so I'll get rid of them we are making a brand new power system for the kitchen I find it's best to try and segment my power system nice and early because you can overpower your wires and then they melt and you got all sorts of troubles and whilst I'm sure somewhere along the line I'm going to find either enough coal to make a coal power plant or a natural gas geyser um, and then we can make enough power and have the, the fancy wires and be able to run it all around and stuff like that it's just easier if you start off with segmented bits and then try and tie them all together later on so the big dig is starting to happen here and this is where you'll notice we are starting to get all our millwood that lower chamber there is filled up pretty quickly though I have a feeling that lower chamber that we were just looking at is actually going to end up becoming the mess hall and we're going to turn all the land up above into farmlands. I'm also going to build a second bedroom whilst we're here. I currently have a nine patrons, so, uh, sorry, eight patrons. I had nine patrons, but one of them left me. I'm, I'm so sad. Anyway, I've got eight patrons and we're going to make two bedrooms for them. Uh, two bedrooms of four. And then maybe we should be able to run the entire colony with just those four. That is what my, uh, my goal for this series is going to be. We might end up having to let a few more friends of the channel in, but we will see what's going on there. I then decide in my infinite graciousness that maybe, just maybe, we can give these uh, dupes some, some light to see by. I don't know how they've been like navigating their way around this rock before now. Uh, echolocation, maybe? I mean, these are genetically genetically modified, like, super beings of the future, right? That, I mean, that those are the only things I would let into my asteroids, yeah? Surely, surely. Anyway, we're also building a, another set of farms up above. I've got a feeling this one is going to be replicated out uh, to a second floor, and then, as I say, the bottom farm shall be taken over as a mess hall. So now that we have a more expansive kitchen and farm setup uh, on the go, we need to start taking note of the edible materials that we have on the top right there. Uh, very helpfully covering all that up with my uh, my power overlay there. But yeah, looking there, you can see that we've got uh, 28,000 calories, give or take. And we need to see whether that goes up or down over the next few a number of cycles. I'm expecting it to go up because we've got excess farms for the number of dupes. I think I worked it out to one once upon a time... Uh, uh, two and a half farms per dupe as long as you're turning them into lice loaf. Uh, unfortunately, that does go through your water quite fast. Uh, so we're going to have to try and sort that out as well. But that's, that's no problem. We've got, we've got coal for infinite power. Well, not infinite power, but for great power. And with great power comes, like, the great use of stuff. I don't want to say responsibility because I'm not a responsible person. They, they give me great power all the time in these games and I'm, I'm very rarely responsible with it. Okay, so that's the, almost the last of the lighting situation going on. That should help everybody's morale and also hopefully give a little bit of an enticement to the uh, light bugs. You can kind of just see one in the, in the bottom farm there. He's kind of floating around and having a good time. So I have just discovered that my storage compactor down below that I put a, a single piece of slime into is starting to leak slime lung everywhere. I should have known that. Of course, slime turns into um, 
polluted oxygen, it vents off polluted oxygen and loses mass, then that polluted oxygen ta- carries away the slime lung. If I had the oxygen scrubber, the uh, the little deodorizer uh, thing, I could then just put that next to the storage compactor, it would turn the polluted oxygen into normal oxygen, and slime lung dies on normal oxygen, and that would have been a great winner there, but no. Jobs are being given out here. We finally got the research to have the jobs board, and I've given them all the jobs that you would expect them to have. We've got Mad Frank as the research, I think we've got uh, Zed as the architect or Zed Shrakus or Subs as the architect. I really should go and have a look at those but you know look at look at the hats, look at the people put the jobs together. I'm, I'm sure you guys are knowing what's going on here. <laughs> So with the research and the power stations tidied up, I've decided that it's time to actually tidy up the bedrooms. Um, our duplicates are going to spend a third of their lives there, and so they're going to be in a nice place. Another three brought in as the chef. I don't know whether he'd agree with this or not, but I'm going to put him in as the chef. Give him the job, give him the priorities, and just get everybody else to start feeding him in raw materials and turning out life's life. So hopefully we can have a higher quality of life for our duplicates, because everyone knows fried mush is better than not fried mush. Anyway, there we go. I also put in the research for the next level of research machine so that we can start researching the next level of research stuff. <laughs> so that should all work out for us. Mainly I'm after, as I say, that oxygen uh, deodorizer, but also coming with that is things like the lavatory and the pumped sink. Uh, and with that comes the headache of the sanitation plumbing. But that's something for next time because we are getting very close to the end of our time together right here. And moving on from this episode, I hope to be going out and exploring a bit more of the asteroid next time. I need to find a cold biome. Unfortunately, they always spawn like one biome away from the central biome. You, you'll end up with like swamp and hot biome around this nice biome in the middle. And then beyond that first layer of biomes, you can find a cold one. Uh, because we need wheeze warts, the, the internal temperature of the, co the colony is just going to start rising and rising because there's nowhere to dump our temperature. So if we can get the wheeze warts, they are the magical uh, plants of entropy denial. Uh, and they can come along and make everything uh, pretty nice. I also need to start thinking about a more sustainable power system. We can't have duplicates just running in hamster wheels all the time. It's a good start, but already just on the research and the uh, kitchen room, we're starting to need as much power as one wheel can put out, so we're not actually getting any battery charge time and things are getting a little bit inefficient. So we need to start looking towards uh, more sustainable power, whether that be the most sustainable power of coal or moving on to natural gas. Only RNGs can tell us because we have no idea where anything is on this map and we'll have to get out and look also looking for a water source as we expand with our number of duplicates we are going to start running through the water in faster and faster ways and particularly if we start running out of algae and need to start splitting the water down into hydrogen oxygen which actually will be an end game way of us getting oxygen we're not going to be able to survive on the algae economy forever. As much as I actually like that style of gameplay, I think the starting sort of algae loop, if you will, as I, I have come to describe it in my own head, uh, is quite a, a nice one. Uh, as I say, we're going to be out exploring. Hopefully we can find some of those uh, pre-built structures, get a neural neuralizer onto one of my du duplicates and give them a few superpowers, and we'll be moving on to a much a wider range of technologies. But until then, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining for this adventure. I will see you next time when we're going to do all of those things. Bye! Bye.